Good evening and welcome to Boxley's. Nice to have you here. For those of you who are joining us on the live stream, thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Ruel Lubog. I play here fairly regularly. You probably see me doing a lot of tribute shows and uh, dedicated various themes or composers. Tonight, uh, I feel the uh, privilege of uh, having been asked by our fourth member to play some of my original material. Um, so this is uh, basically my book of original compositions that I've uh, written over the years, starting in college, actually. <coughs> um, before I talk about the music, I'd like to introduce the members of the band. On the trumpet, very fine jazz artist, an alum of the great Maine and Ferguson big band, SRJO member, uh, award-winning composer and trumpeter and clinician. Uh, who are you? <laughs> He's a Sagittarius? Oh, but you're married, so you can't be giving out your sign anymore. Um, but a gentleman who I've known for a very long time, we were just talking about this. Uh, I've known him since he was in junior high, so don't hold it against me how old I am. But uh, anyways, uh, so pleased to have him here on stage. And he, he actually specifically requested, hey, can we play your music? It's such an honor to have this guy play it. Mr. Thomas Marriott on the trumpet. <coughs> Are you like a Yamaha artist or something like that now? Yeah. So he's a, yeah, he's a Yamaha artist, which is quite, a, quite special. Back here on the acoustic bass, gentlemen I met last summer? Last summer um, at a jam session at a, a friend's house. And um, it was like, oh yeah, it was just, we just hit it off, uh, just musically, and it was just a great time. And in fact, we did a session earlier this week. I was in Orlando for a week, came back. Well, he messaged me two days before I came back. I said, hey, can you do a session on Monday? I said, uh, or Sunday. I go, well, I'm flying back. What time's the session? He goes, four. I go, all right, I land at one, sure. <laughs> so <laughs> got off the plane, took family home, and then went down and did a jam session with this guy. That's how much I enjoy playing with it. Mr. Julian Wiseman on the bass. <coughs> Don't know enough about him to give a background other than you repair. Oh, he's a Sagittarius as well, okay. You, uh, you repair instruments as well. He's a luthier for uh, <laughs> Lex Luthier. Okay, <laughs> wasn't expected to go that way. So if you need a bass fixed, come see Julian. And on the drums, gentlemen, uh, I'm not sure how we first met, but it was, uh, oh, maybe that's, that's probably. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, like myself, he's also a, an alum of the uh, Glenn Miller Orchestra. He was on the band uh, three or four years after I was, so we did our time on, in that uh, band. But uh, originally from New Jersey, came here via New York, was one of the guys on the scene there, and how fortunate we have been to have him out here in Seattle as part of the scene, Mr. Stefan Schatz, because Schatz is where it's at. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me uh, talk a little bit about the first tune. That first tune was entitled Lisa. I actually wrote that my freshman year of college, and I think there's a, is there a dedication on that chart? Did I put a dedication on that chart? Oh, yeah. No, it's not your one. Uh, oh, for Lisa Haynes, CW number one women's singles tennis player, 1982. <laughs> she was in my biology class, and uh, tall brunette, and uh, I was str stricken, as they say. So actually, that composition, what inspired that was, I, I needed a title for that, so I, put, I named it Lisa, but the, the inspiration was actually... Uh, uh, we, this uh, was it? yesterday we lost the great Wayne Shorter, composer, saxophonist, <coughs> member of the Jazz Messengers, uh, Weather Report, leader of Weather Report, playing the great Miles Davis mid 60s quintet. And uh, at the time I was trying to think of how I could write a song, and I read that what Wayne would do is he'd write the melody first and then come up with the chords later. And so I started writing this melody, and it was inspired by Wayne, but also by. Herbie Hancock's Dolphin Dance. And I even stole 
couple of the rhythms and figures in there, obviously. And uh, so that's what a lot of these tunes are going to be. I'll, I'll explain them as we go along. So um, that was inspired by Wayne and Herbie. So we're going to continue now with a ballad. This is one I wrote after I broke up with my first girlfriend um, of three years. I think, it's Tom, you might have met her at one time. It's tall blonde. <laughs> I brought her up to Port Townsend. <laughs> Anyways, this is called Apology. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. That was entitled Dana's Dance, and that was written for my wife, Dana. Yeah, there's a lot of energy in that one. <laughs> doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Just uh, I needed a title, really. It, did, it doesn't reflect anything about our relationship or anything like that. Ah! <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay. Actually, what, what year is this? Uh, 2023. Okay, so yeah, we're coming up on 30 years this year. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll get there, Thomas. <laughs> so we're going to continue now. This, this uh, tune uh, I wrote actually during the pandemic. And uh, this has a very special, special place in my heart. And uh, we've played it a couple times, but tonight it's even more special because... Uh, to have Thomas play on it because this is actually a special dedication to his parents who are uh, not with us anymore. And uh, they were kind of the parents to everybody on the jazz scene. I mean, they would come out and, you know, show up at your gigs when you'd least expect it. And they always are so supportive of uh, all the musicians. And uh, I can remember like back in the day when you guys had the quintet and we'd rehearse at the house and, you know, um, they were just wonderful, wonderful people and uh, <coughs> very uh, sorely missed, you know, in all of our hearts and, and on the scene as well. They supported the music and uh, they always had great smiles uh, for us on the bandstand. So this is for Dave and Helen Marriott. And this is entitled Beckett Point Soliloquy. And Beckett Point is a uh, little um, peninsula out in Port Townsend. And during the jazz workshop out there, Dave and Helen would, would host a uh, faculty barbecue at their cabin on the beach there. And just so many great memories of hanging out with uh, just these great jazz artists and uh, with uh, Thomas and... Dave and uh, their folks and uh, their sister Becky. Um, and uh, anyways, this is uh, so glad that you're here to play this. I wish Dave was actually here to play the trombone part that I wrote. So this is uh, Beckett Point Soliloquy. Thank you. 
All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Again, that was for uh, Dave and Helen Marriott. All right, we're going to do this uh, next piece. Um, I wanted to write uh, a song based on a previous uh, existing song. This, this has been done in jazz a lot, um, where musicians would take a song and write a new melody to it so they didn't have to pay the rights on the, <laughs> on the tune, right? So for example, uh, Charlie Parker, you know, one of his famous tunes was uh, How High the Moon, Ornithology, which was based on How High the Moon, and he had a whole bunch of songs based on the song I Got Rhythm, like Anthropology, Moose the Mooch, you know, th things like that. So I um, wanted to do the same sort of thing, and one of the tunes that I was learning at the time, well, I'd been playing for a while, but finally feeling comfortable playing on it was a song by Sonny Rollins called Airgen, which is Nigeria spelled backwards. <laughs> and... Um, so I kind of modeled this on Sonny's tune, but the conception of it was actually inspired by listening to um, a couple guys out of L.A. who were, I don't know if you'd call it sort of free bop, I guess, I don't know. Uh, anyways, it was Warren Marsh and Lee Connitz. And so my idea was to have something that was based on bebop, but then it had a little bit more of a through composed kind of feel to it. And the original head was pretty cool, but it was a little too hard. <laughs> so I rewrote it, simplified some of the parts so it's a little more conventional. And um, this is dedicated to my kid's pediatrician. <laughs> His name is Dr. H. Lee Kilburn. He was the first pediatrician on the east side. Um, and he served on the boards of the University of Washington, Overlake Hospital, um, uh, Evergreen Hospital. And we get together every week as long as one of us isn't sick. <laughs> and we listen to jazz and watch old movies. And anyways, uh, this is entitled Unbelievable Lee. It's also kind of a tribute to Lee Connors, too. Here we go, Un Unbelievable Lee. Thank you. 
so hard stuff's falling off the piano yeah getting all excited okay we're gonna i know we're gonna run a little bit over we're gonna do another one more original here oh, of course it's all originals i guess <laughs> this was uh based on a composition by the great bud powell he wrote a song called in poco loco this is called luco luco which in uh tagalog because my background's from there means crazy so, and uh, if you've known me a while, yeah, you probably would think that. Oh, before we play this one, please, Thomas Marriott on trumpet, <laughs> Julian Weissman on bass, Stefan Schatz on drums. We're gonna take a short pause for the cause right after this, and we've got another set, so please stick around. Oh, uh, I do wanna do a commercial real quick. Thank you to Danny Kolke, uh, the members of the board here, uh, 501C3, uh, jazz clubs, Northwest Jazz Clubs, nw.org. Please consider membership, and uh, don't forget that um, uh, your contributions help events like this happen as well. Special guests. Also, want to mention the Seattle Jazz Collective, uh, oh, Seattle Jazz Fellowship. Mr. Thomas Marriott, director of that. So, uh, what's the URL for that, Thomas? Seattlejazzfellowship.org. Seattlejazzfellowship.org. So check out that uh, that site as well. So here we go with Luco Luco. Mm -hmm. 
falling in love with falling for me. Falling in love with love is playing the fool. Caring too much, the sunshine to the now fits me. Learning to trust is just for children in school.
summer nights you to come in his window when the night is new he tells you all his thoughts in the fading candlelight summer night oh how i envy you summer night oh how i envy you summer night oh how i envy you. We're going to do a song that just means a lot to me. It's a funny tune with perhaps a very outdated lyric, and then perhaps not. You know, it's uh, it's not for every person at every moment, but it's still just such a the quintessential love song of a bygone era. And we just had Valentine's Day, so I'll just pretend like we're still having Valentine's Day. And the song needs to be sung. You must remember this A kiss is still a kiss A sigh is still a sigh The fundamental Welcome back for the second set. <laughs> Once again, don't forget to check out jazzclubsnw.org for Jazz Clubs Northwest. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. We're going to open up the second set with a composition I wrote for one of my mentors and heroes, the great Cedar Walton. Um, and uh, I took some ideas that you kind of hear Cedar use where he would use like the same note but change the chords underneath it. And uh, this has some typical Cedar-ish vocabulary in it. If you're familiar with his music, you'll, you'll know what I mean. If you're not, check out Cedar Walton. Okay, here this is called One for Cedar.
So, okay, I'm going to give away my age a little bit. I am a product of the 70s. So, <laughs> this next tune was sort of inspired by, uh, like, uh, kind of that whole... <laughs> Wait, did you say tune of the 90s? <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, but, but Bob James, uh, George Duke, you know, that kind of era. Um, so, this is sort of... At the time, I was actually uh, gigging with a little bit with Jeff Kashua, a local kind of uh, fusion jazz artist, I guess you'd say. And so uh, this is kind of a, a tribute to that style. This was inspired by a, f a former co-worker of mine who uh, was a really f a fine artist. And uh, I actually started doing some pencil and some crayon and getting into art, and, and I found that it really influenced a lot of uh, what I was would do musically for about the last five years. So this is dedicated to my friend. This is called The Artist.
All right, this next piece is uh, actually not, oh, thank you. Good night, you guys. It's actually not my composition, at least the melody. Um, this was written by a friend of mine from college, a uh, guitarist by the name of uh, Nick Shower, and he sent it to me and asked if I'd be interested. And I go, yeah, I really like the melody, but I'm hearing something different in my head. And I said, do you mind if I write a new harmonization for it? And at the time, I was uh, trying to learn a bunch of Billy Strayhorn's music. And so what I did is I did a Billy Strayhorn type reharmonization on this. And uh, Nick's title for this piece is It Never Occurred to Me. It's inspired by uh, uh, Upper Manhattan Medical Group.
All right, we're going to skip our ballad. Anyways, there was a ballad I was going to do in there. It was uh, one I wrote uh, at a very lonely time in my life. It's called Will There Be Love For Me, but we're not going to hear it. <laughs> so I just thought I'd tell you about that one. It's really sappy. But actually, your brother was the first guy to play it on <laughs> the gig. So, but it's a, is it? <laughs> okay, sorry, Dave. Uh, okay, we're going to close. This is a, a tune I composed. This is dedicated to my friend and mentor, the great Monty Alexander. And uh, this is called Monty's Mood. Once again, let's thank Mr. Thomas Marriott. <laughs> Don't forget Seattle Jazz Fellowship. <laughs> yeah, it's like a church, right? On the uh, acoustic bass, Julian Weisman. Yeah. On the drums, Stefan Schatz. Right. Yours truly, Ruel Lubog. Here's Monty's Mood. Oh, yeah, it, it, there's the way th this is written, there's a, a melody, but the blowing section is just the old standard love for sale.